this is the new Novastar H series processor. Uh, this is the H5, meaning it is a 5U rack mount system. Uh, they have an H2, an H5, an H9, and an H15. Numbers on the end represent the spacing that's required to install it inside of a rack. Uh, on the front, <clears throat> you have all of your device info laid out in front of you, showing you what ports are currently active and in use. You got a multi viewer, which is not currently configured. Touch screen on the front. Uh, settings language. You can change your uh, your network and such inside of here. Factory resets, and that's pretty much what we have on the front panel. It also shows your IP address, which you will then need to use to come up here to control this unit. Uh, I really like that it is a web UI versus standalone software. This allows anyone with an iPad or an iPhone or computer that's on the same network to be able to control this unit, such as switching. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, the unit itself does switching and scaling all internally without any additional latency, which I find phenomenal. Um, that just saves you another piece of hardware that you need to purchase to accomplish the same result. Um, real quickly, on the back of this unit, it is a full modular design, very similar to something like a Barco E2 or a Christie Spider. Uh, over here on the left hand side is your input selection, which is notated by the letter I as in indigo. Over here on the right hand side, we have our output selection, which is specified by O, as in Omega. Uh, there will be an enhanced version of the H9, which shares input and output on that same bus. So it'll be specified I slash O, letting you know that it can be either configured as an input or an output. But in this case, we have input and output. Um, there are Dual power supplies for redundancy, which is very nice. Uh, should be able to hot swap. Put those in as needed. You have your power switch. Above that is your COM, USB, <coughs> Ethernet, which is how we're connecting to our computer for control, and Genlock. Uh, this particular model that was sent for the demo uh, has a few option cards installed. Uh, we have DVI, we have four by HDMI, uh, these right here are going to be 1080p 60 or 4K 30 uh, using only port 4 and port 2 when uh, you have these set up in, I believe it is single link mode, each of these are 1080p or you can disable uh, port 1 and port 3 and only use port 2 and 4 which is specified by HDMI 0.14. And at that point, you get uh, twice the bandwidth, so you can get uh, 6G, I believe. Below that, we have an HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.2 card. This will allow you to get your uh, 4K 60 and higher resolutions. Below that, we have an Ethernet, uh, which is used for webcams and protocols of the sort. I believe Novastar told me they are working on implementing NDI on this at some point as well. Uh, might be a while, but that would be very interesting as well, where you can start incorporating new tech products into the processor. And below that, we have four 3G SDI inputs. Um, this still allows us to have six more inputs on this unit if we need it. And there are additional input cards. Uh, see the Novasar website for full lists of option cards. It is quite extensive. Over here on the output selection, this, if you own a M-Control 4K, should look very similar. You have your 16 ports and your two fiber SFPs. Um, so the way this is currently loaded is we can now do, just using these two ports alone, we can do 8K by 4K, um, and then we can also have an additional spare if we need it. Um, this is a lot of output. <laughs> um, and then below that, we also have a MVR, which is kind of a multi-viewer card that you can send out via Ethernet or via HDMI. All right, let's flip this back around. 
there are very large fans on both sides and when this thing turns on and turns off it sounds like a jet engine going off which can be a little concerning but at the same time you know you're definitely getting the proper cooling that you need uh, these fans are more than adequate uh, probably would need to dust and clean out as any hardware would but very impressed with the fans that we had right there so as far as the control of the unit we have a couple sections at top we have the configuration section and this right here displays your output selection on the back so right now we have our three output cards and what you can do is you can drag and drop your output card on the canvas right here and then you can specify the width and the height and your x and y axis offset of that card on this axis from there you would go over to your programming And this is how you assign your inputs to your output canvas. So currently we have input one connected to this device uh, coming in on so right here. The way this is listed is two dash one, meaning that is card two port number one. And if I look on the back, that is exactly where that's at port one. So all these ports uh, one uh, or card one port one through four, these are gonna be your DVIs. This is green, meaning it's active, it's bumped to the top of the list. Two one is card two, port one, and then the rest of the option, uh, the rest of the capture uh, inputs for that card is down below. And you can scroll through. And the way you assign that is you just click and drag it right onto the canvas. And at this point, you can position X and Y, and you can do scaling all from the web UI. So that's pretty in incredible for me, being able to do switching and scaling from a web UI without any dedicated software. That's pretty cool. Uh, so from here, you'd assign your, your inputs to your output canvas, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you would hit save down here and you can give it a preset. We already have a preset one, so let's give this preset two. So now we have preset one and preset two, and this is how you can go about swapping between different configurations. You can have it mapped one way and then mapped another way and go cycle between them depending on what's being uh, displayed on your stage or event at that time, which is very handy. <clears throat> Up at the top, you can black it out, freeze, uh, fade to black, Going back to the configuration tab, you can send test cards right here by clicking the output test pattern and boom, at this point you can send your test card all from the web UI as well. So if you're wanting to build out your, your wall, you don't have to dig through a bunch of menus. You can just tie this in, boom, and you can test your wall as it's being built. You can also adjust the color of this out here so you can change your white balance and hue as well per output. Again, I think that's pretty incredible. This would be your multi-viewer tab, which is not currently set up. And then we have the device tab, which is very similar to the device tab on the front display. And if you hover over and click your card, it'll tell you all the information about your card. And from here, to where you can also enable or disable uh, certain features per port, such as limited to full RGB range or you can come down here and, and put things into dual link mode to double up the bandwidth and allow you to get your 6G. Uh, so this menu will change depending on what card you have selected. So if I select the network card at this point, I can now assign IP addresses. And then finally over here at the settings tab is where you can configure even more information about your input and output cards. You can come in here and you can do communications, uh, firmware updates, your typical settings as you would see is right here. Uh, going back to your programming, um, right here is where you set up your scenes and then you can change all your scenes also via your uh, stream deck. You can connect to stream deck and send out the commands via that way, which is also super handy. Um, but yeah, my first impressions of the H series kind of blew me out of the water for the features you get for the price you pay. Um, I like to explain it to 
people that aren't familiar with this, it's kind of like uh, an E2 married uh, a Nova Star UHD or uh, 4K. So it gives you the option to do switching and scaling. It's modular and it's also a sending card. So very, very impressed. I know personally going forward, H series will be the only thing myself and my company buys just because of the values there. Um, I can buy a loaded out H2 cheaper than I can buy two 4K processors, uh, the M control 4Ks. So that saves me money. I gain features by scaling and switching, which I previously didn't have, which also saves me hardware latency and failure points. So all in all, very, very impressed with this fully modular, basically built to spec, built to your design, how you want it. Fill it full of the cards you want, skip all the features you don't need, save yourself some money in the, in the process, and you get a really nice control via the web without any dedicated software. So very impressed. Thank you, Novastar.